I'm, I'm glad I had glasses to match, match your swag and your vibe too. So <laughs> we're good, man. We're good. Alrighty. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of 18 Avenue Podcast. Of course, I am your host, Rico Bottles. You are now tuning into the podcast network that talk about uh cultural people and their stories. And today my special guest here, he is the Titan. What up, ladies and gentlemen? It's the boy the Titan coming to you live. We are here with my boy Rico. Uh, for y'all who don't know who I am, my name is Abdul. Um, I go by the Titan. Um, by day, I'm an investment specialist with one of Canada's five major banks. Uh, what I do specifically is I study everything within the political and socioeconomic factors that influence the financial market. And I advise all of my clients based upon that, you know, provide them with um, uh, fit for purpose investment objectives that match their long term interest. And like I said, I have a moniker, the Titan. By nighttime, what I do is uh, I'm a personal um, habit coach. You know, I do ev- I, I do everything within the realm of finding little tweaks that influence people's daily habits and uh, just help them become better people. That's fat, man. Well, we're definitely happy to have you here on the channel and to hear your story, hear your background, and Thank all you, these brother. fantastic, amazing things you're doing. Thank you, brother. I'd like to dig a little bit more into your life personally. Um, so tell us, where are you from, man? Well, my roots actually go back to Nigeria, you know, shout out Nigeria. Uh, Yes, yes. But um, I had a privilege of growing up in the Middle East uh, in a country called Oman. Uh, Yeah. So Oman is actually just right right in between Yemen and Saudi. Phenomenal country. Phenomenal. So I grew up there and um, yeah, ventured out to Canada when I was pursuing um, my higher education. I came out here for university and uh, that's kind of uh, what brought me out to to, to the western part of the world. Okay, okay. And, And how long... I mean, what made you go down to the Middle East? What made you go down to Oman? You know what? It was just, um, you know, fa- family prospects. You know, my dad happened to be invested in the, in, in the oil and gas industry. Like most Nigerians, you know, Nigeria is obviously, you know, naturally endowed with, uh, with oil and gas. So a lot of f- folks from that region typically tend to go down that path. So my dad not being much different, you know, kind of ventured on that path. Oman actually has happens to be one of the bigger countries in the Middle East that has, has a, a, a high amount of oil production. So navigated there, and then we just made that home. And how long were you there for? Um, a good 11, 11 12 years. Yeah, oh, it, damn, it, it, yeah it, was, it was a half minute. It was a half minute. You <laughs> when, know, so. when, when, did you, uh, when did you come to Canada? I came to Canada there you know, what, about oh, 2008. Um, okay. In pursuit, like I said, in pursuit of a higher education. Um, so <laughs> it's actually kind of interesting. Living in the Middle East, of course, you know, with a relatively conservative culture, um, you know, there's a lot of things you're not exposed to. And I remember, you know, for my first time in Canada, I happened to go to, the, to, to Toronto. I got admitted to the University of Toronto, you know, for, um, for a business degree. And Toronto, being synonymous to the big apple of Canada, you know, I, I got to experience a lot. In, in, in my first year, I probably almost got kicked out of the country a couple of times. Um, I also got to experience a whole lot of things that made me a uh, no better man. So Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's pretty nice, man. Well, I mean, that's, um, that's pretty cool. I didn't know you were you had lived down in the Middle East and whatnot. Oh. That must have been quite an experience, I'm sure. Oh, most definitely. Um, so, where else have you lived besides the Middle East and Canada? Um, of course, I've, I've in Kuwait, um, Singapore. I've been in um, Dubai, um, Nigeria, of course, because I was born there. Um, Indonesia, Thailand. Yep, those are the ones I can think of right now. Yeah, that's pretty fresh. All right, so let's go back to like um, your upbringing. So you you say your father was uh, in oil and gas, or you work in oil and gas kind of deal. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Um, how many do you come from a big family, or is it just you, your mom, dad, and how does that work? Well, I would like to consider it today as a medium-sized family. You know, just three of us, um, me being the eldest, and then dad and mom. But on the on, on the flip side, you know, when you go into the extended part, my grandpa, you know, he did his thing. I think uh, he had. He had quite a quite a number of wives and quite a he number a of kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I can't disclose that on here right now, but yeah, <laughs> we, we had yeah, yeah, we, we had quite the pack. We're family. <laughs> yeah, we had quite the pack. <laughs> <laughs> So what got you into finances? Was that kind of like the influence of your father type of deal? Like how how did I come about? 
You know what? I like to consider myself being a a, a, a natural hustler uh-huh. from a from a very young age. Right. You know, I remember even all, going all the way back. You know, to to I, I grew up in the military school um, somewhat um, before I actually navigated to the Middle East. Um, uh, in so Nigeria, you mean? That is okay. correct. But isn't so that like a curriculum requirement? At grade twelve, you have to do some years of military kind of deal before you. If you well, we, we do have a, a National Youth Service Corps, which is a mandatory service Got it. Um, upon graduating from university. Mm-hmm. However, unlike a lot of other countries where after you graduate from grade 12, you know, it's always a mandate to go serve in the military. Mm-hmm. Nigeria isn't like that. Mine was more so because my dad had a lot of, a lot of influence from his, uh, his extended family. He thought it was a good way to just breed kids. And then, yeah, they kind of fired me up there. So, you know, my experience there, um, you know, there was a... There was not a law that was allowed, like I said. It was uh, pretty strict from a military standpoint. And now, uh, you know, we had to improvise, improvise ways to get some of the things we wanted. For example, if it was biscuits, if it was just, you know, chocolate beverages, we had to, like, figure out how to trade, you know. Is it mangoes? Is it, is, is it fruits? Is it, uh, is it oranges? Is it biscuits for whatever? So from a very young age, you know, it's, I've always been inspired with the ability to be able to trade a for B or B for C. And obviously trying to finesse way or trying to find ways to make A more profitable right, right. and uh, you know going to into university you know the same hustles just kind of followed me you know i remember back in my university days i used to like hustle scarves those pashmina scarves that benches and stuff for like 50 bucks mm. in dubai they used to sell them for like three dollars so my mom would give me a whole bunch of them first week of school i'll open up table and just sell them to all my friends so it's just been natural and um yeah i just figured this is something i i'll, I'll have a passion for it i should just probably study professionally yeah so, no I, I mean there's nothing wrong with that right Absolutely. It's all about uh, optimizing on the uh, your transferable skills. I, I most definitely, and even just understanding the way you know the financial markets are shaped, you know, demand and supply. You know, what are the things that we as individuals do to you know make a certain industry thrive? Like you're looking at the emergence of Apple. You know, I remember when Apple first came out. Not everyone was on the mm-hmm. Apple wave. You know, they first introduced a very simple technology like the small iPod. I remember Jobs said. All I want to do is introduce a thousand songs in your pocket. And ever since then, you know, we've just seen the emergence of a brand. You know, that that kind of stuff, you know, just, you know, really, really sparks my interest, understanding how that works. So. That's really amazing. Um, there's another thing. I remember the very first time I saw you, of course, I met you like many other people. Hey, in reason- yeah. hey you know, I'm going to go there now. Hey. Of course, of course. So, so uh, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, you know, the crowd has started to die down there at this point in the protest with the Black Lives Matters and everything like that. And I look across and I see this big ass dog. And then literally I see another big ass dog. And right. I'm like, yo, right. who is this guy? Why does he have no shirt on? People out there with the masks and everything like that. And here you come off showing. And by the way, like, you come off showing all type of muscle. What was your mission that day, dog? Like, you know, people had their wives there. You know what? You know what? You know what? Man, hide the wives. You know, hide the daughters. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just play with you. Know, you, 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 you can bring your wives out. <laughs> you know what? It's summertime. You know, summer is an official no shirt season for me. You know what? I think that's a natural trajectory into you know the, the second part of me as an individual. You know. I always look at life and I look at myself as a walking billboard for what I mm-hmm. do, you know, and any opportunity I have, you know, to spark a conversation or to get someone to ask, yo, dude, what did you do to look like that? It's a business prospect for me. So, you know what, beyond the fact that I just feel very comfortable without a shirt, you know what, it's always a business, it's always an opportunity right, to Right, right. I wasn't sure business. if you're going to show up here today with no shirt, tent top, yeah. a suit on. I had no idea. I was like, I don't know what he's going to show up as, so. We'll be, we'll, we'll, be, we'll, be, we'll, be, we'll be we'll be we'll be ready for whatever comes. <laughs> that's what's up. That's what's up. Maybe, maybe on the next one, you know, I'm gonna just come up you know, with, the, with my little right. hawk. But you do yep. work out as well. Like you, you, your major, your major. I mean, your physique is uh, is freaking on a different level. Thank you. Know? you so, man. how many years? It. How long have you been working out? You know what I was well over a decade. You know, to be pre- eleven to twelve years to be precise. And uh, you, you know what? It's, it's even more interesting uh, the way I actually started up on this journey. A lot of people don't know this, but 50 Cent was actually, you know, my inspiration. Mm. You know, oh, when you drop uh, Find Me in, in the Club? Oh, yeah, in the club. Oh, I remember, oh, I remember that day. <laughs> yeah, you, you know what's up? So Channel uh, O, you know, man drops, and I'm like, yo, what is this? I went to school the next day. All the ladies were like, did you see 50 Cent? I was like, yeah. what? Yo, I'm on this train. And you know what, from there, it just turned into like, you know, a habit, you know, and then turned into a lifestyle. And then I just started finding that, 
you know what, working out or, you know, being passionate about fitness and putting so much thought into it hasn't really only helped my physique prosper, but just being able to transfer that analogy of dedication towards any one craft into all the multiple different facets of my life, I've just found is really helped me prosper. And I think that's the reason why it's just so ingrained in me right now. You know, understanding that what I get put in is what I, what I get out of it. You know, and that's with everything else in life, be it love, you know, be it friendships, be it your job, whatever you put in is what you get out. So it's, it's always a gentle, sweet reminder. I'm with that. I'm with that. I think it's important that I think oftentimes it doesn't matter who you are. Right. Everyone have a skill set. Absolutely. A lot of the time, Absolutely. I think, too, uh, we tend to sleep on our skill set because we're not disciplined enough. You know, I Absolutely. had to learn to get disciplined like some time back. And, you know, and once I figured out my own uh, my own medicine, my own prescription, right. then it, right. I knew that it was time for me to follow up and do the things that I said I'm going to do and stick mm -hmm. to doing those things because right, you don't right, get right. it right the first time. It's Absolutely. come to a point now where, uh, but before I even get too much into that, I'm going to ask you a question right now. What is your, uh, what is your take on failure? What does failure means to you? Failure for me, it's an, is, is a very important step in the trajectory of success. Failure for me is a marker that provides you with a reason to find an area to improve. You know, too many times people see failure as don't go mm -hmm. there. I see failure more so as, hey, you know what? This is one area I could probably tweak and mm -hmm. be better. And it's important to understand that in order to succeed, you got to go through these hurdles of failure to mm -hmm. get there. No, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And if I if I have to draw, if I could draw any analogies, you know, I, I could take it back into my very very early days when I started my fitness journey. Just like most people, you know, we don't necessarily learn about this in high school or even in university unless you're a major. But you know, I had to try a lot of things. You know, I had to tweak um, different diet hacks, different habits, you know, different working out styles in order to get to where I am today. Had I not gone through those hurdles in quote unquote unquote failures, I probably wouldn't be where I am today. So you know, I take them very closely and. Uh, be more importantly, you know, taking the time to reflect, introspection, reflection on what made you fail, where you slipped, know where you fell, I think is a, is a very important step in success. It's getting up, got to be a key factor, being Absolutely. able to fall. I remember on the DMX Absolutely. line, uh, there was a freestyle with him and Jay-Z, like, they called it a rap bottle, but for me it was entertainment just on a, you know, uh, rap level. You know, right, two right. great MCs doing a thing, right? Especially back then too. But there was a line that he said in in his rap. It's like, "I fall down, I fall down eight times and get up nine. It's like, you know. And anybody who grabs that line right off the back, you know that life in itself is not going to be easy. There's always going to be that tumble, whether it's you know whether it's relationship, whether it's close friendship, whether it's a loss of a close uh, loved one or Whatever it may be, there's always going to be that challenge. Um, people coming into your life, then leaving your life, and all of these things. But at the end of the day, as an individual, I feel you on that part is that you, you owe it to yourself. Most to, definitely. To get up and, and fight right. again. Absolutely. And that, that line in particular, I've actually never heard that rap battle, but that line, it even hits me different because it, it actually falls very much in line with one of my major motives mm -hmm. in life, which is perseverance always breeds mm -hmm. success. You know, fall down eight, mm -hmm. getting up nine. That one extra time, that's that extra perseverance we need mm -hmm. for success. Just being able to get back up every time and, you know, just <clears throat> fight. Yeah. So. That idea of, uh, I normally, you, you said perseverance, breeds success. I said uh, yeah. persistent break resistance. Yeah, exactly. It's yeah, like exactly. that whole concept of not taking no for an answer and, and right. just keep moving through it. Um, right. So, right. I mean, now you've been in Calgary for some time right. and been living here. Um, I mean, and plus your shirt is always coming up. So, like, if I saw my lady here, I make sure that you're not anywhere on this block, dog. No, you just gotta make sure your lady is in love with nah, you. Nah, man. dog. Nah, That's dog. Nah, <laughs> fuck that. Uh, 
<laughs> you ever seen those uh, seen those Nigerian movies and then the character come by and say, "Oh, it was you know, the devil for the devil." Yeah, it was the devil's work. You know, the devil was there. You know what? On cool, uh, boy, I I drank um papani water last night. No, I right? It was like ah, it was the devil. It wasn't me, right? No, we're not blaming shit on right. the devil, dog. I make sure I'll right. be standing on the corner with a shotgun or something like that. I, <laughs> I, I know. <laughs> boop, boop. Yeah, yeah. You know, probably had no shells in it. But it'd be it's enough right. to scare somebody up. <laughs> I feel you, So, bro. you know, I think you. that's um, that's pretty cool. All right. So we will. So I'm going to get up now and turn these cameras off and then turn it back on and we'll do the next one. Okay. Sounds good. All right. So let's talk about the things that when you were in high school, what did you always want to be? I wanted to always be the kind of guy who could influence people. You know, I read a, I read a book at a very young age um, titled 48 Laws of Power by Robert Greene. If you haven't checked it out, um, phenomenal book. You know what? Um, this is, is one of those type of books that you can definitely see in one of two ways. But I know I'll let you guys make your opinions. But back to your, your question. Um, in that book, one of the 48 laws of power um, that Robert Greene um, cited was courting attention at all costs, but ensuring that that attention that you court is able to influence and drive the boat where you want it to. And, and, and that line hit me very different, you know. Um, one thing I always knew about myself was I have a very bull mentality, um, you know, the ability to just get out there and just keep fighting. And I figured, you know, just... As I grew older, this is something that that really helped out in group work, you know, in assignments, you know, even at a at, at a professional level. So um, just identifying that that, that mm, at a very young age, it's uh, just kind of propelled me to always want to be the kind of person who wants to drive uh, an initiative. And I think fitness was my calling for me. Yeah, I like that. <clears throat> I like that. Um, was there any point in your life where you, and going back to Philly here now, what was that time in your life where when you hit rock bottom? Have you ever hit rock bottom in your life? Oh, most definitely. Most definitely. I remember um, upon graduating from university, um, <laughs> it was more of a pandemic in a workplace. You know, the industries were down. You know, with being in Calgary, there isn't much um, for someone with my skill set at the time, you know, from, a, from an educational standpoint to navigate into, a, into the professional world. And of course, one of the biggest things that we all yearn for graduating from any professional designation or even from university is, you know, getting in that big time job. Um, those weren't available at the time. So I remember for about two, three years post-graduation, you know, I literally needed to find ways to strive, you know, um, obviously <laughs> asking people or asking anyone for any hand downs was a no, no. Um, so I, I just started thinking of ways and, um, one of the easiest ways was, um, I had to drive, I had to move actually from where I was in the city. to a relatively lower, lower budget area in the city. And, um, I used to go around in every single store, you know, soliciting offers to actually clean up the stores, you know, and it was a gas station, you know, a mom and dad shop just to make ends meet, you know, I, 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 I did that for about two years, like I said up until, you know, the market sort of opened up a little bit, you know, and I was able to kind of land my, my, my first time big time job. So that was probably my biggest example of failure, you know, in, 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 in my life when I, when I look back. Yeah, yeah. And, and uh, what, what did the people around you at the time think of uh, you as you were going through that time, like friends or were there anybody around you at the time that you could talk to? Oh, most definitely. I mean, as far as I'm having people to talk to, um, I don't think there's ever a shortage of that. I think everyone always has an opinion, but we as individuals need to be more cognizant of the kind of energies, you know, we're taking in. I think being sure of yourself and understanding what path you're on, it goes a long way in being able to identify good from bad energy. You know, obviously there's people you can talk to, but the people I'm talking to don't necessarily know what my journey is. You know, they don't know what my path is, what, what my struggles are. So I always try to keep that in view, um, you know, and uh, just stay, in, if it means staying in a box, you know, I just keep focused on what my goals are. Yeah, that's a, that's a very good point. Cause I mean, yeah. everybody's always going to um, go through these strains stra of life. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. What would you say is the greatest uh, lessons that you've uh, ever learned? Oh, I'll see. Oh. 
that's that's always a tough question because <laughs> there's so many lessons you know you gotta learn. But yeah. um, if there's any one um, any any one lesson is or any one thing I always keep at the back of my mind is I like to measure twice and cut once. And I know it sounds so simple, but on the grand scheme of things, on a very micro level, is a lot more than what that simple word means. You know, I'm the kind of individual who likes to be very efficient and. I've found sometimes in my life I've been working so hard towards a goal, but all of my T's were crossed, all of my I's were dotted. Or I could have a wall I'm trying to, you know what, go over, but my ladder is, you know, leaning against the wrong wall. So just being able to understand planning from a very, very basic level up onto execution, I would say that's probably the biggest thing I, I've learned yeah, in all of yeah. my years. And what would you say that, um, I me, mean, if you could draw like, uh, like a picture, like an example and an illustration for the viewers and myself, what, could you come up with uh, maybe like a, like a picture? Uh, I, I, I absolutely. You know what? It's, uh, you know, if, let's even look at people who are in university. You know, too many times I think the very first time I've seen this in reality is when I graduated and, uh, you know, talking to a lot of my friends, you know, asking them, you know what, well, now that you're all done, you know, what are you going to do? And a lot of those individuals didn't even have an idea of what they were going to do post-graduation. For me, that was alarming because... A lot of these guys who just spent four or five years, you know, and a whole lot of tens of thousands of dollars accumulating degrees and like studying for stuff that you don't even know what you're going to do with it, right? So for me, that, that kind of struck me as individuals not really planning ahead, not really knowing what, what, what the journey is. And, you know, and that's just one example from an educational standpoint. I also see this every day in, you know, in the fitness industry, which, like I already said, I'm very passionate about. You know, you find people, you know what? either doing the wrong things, you know, or going through diet hacks, you know, or trying to find shortcuts to get you where they want to get to when there's really a proper way that is a proven path to success. But people just don't, they don't want to go the long route. So measuring twice, cutting once, ensuring that all of your back end homework is done before you get out there. To doing the hard work. Absolutely. Never taking a shortcut. Absolutely. That's important. Absolutely. And I wonder sometimes why, but don't you think that maybe it's just a part of who we are as human beings? If we can, you know, get it now, why wait till tomorrow? Absolutely. And uh, you know what? You, you, you hit a very, very strong point. And I, I like to allude to that concept as the concept of delayed gratification. And when you look at life, everything that we can easily touch, we don't necessarily get a lot of gratification, gratification from. Whenever we can actually wait, you know, be it a first home or be it a, a sneaker or be it food, if you can train the mind to be disciplined to actually wait before it actually enjoys things, I feel like we live a lot more fulfilled life. Mm -hmm. You know, and you, you, you see that even, even in sports, you know, the guys who had to really bust their ass to get to where they are professionally, you know, at their respective careers, you find they stayed there a little bit longer just because of how much work was in the back end. So... That concept of delayed gratification, yes, we always seek to get things the easy way, but being able to train the mind to wait until a later date so we can actually earn it, I think is a very strong concept we all need to adhere to. I, I'm, I'm with that. I'm with that. I think uh, what you're saying is 100% true, um, <clears throat> which is probably why I brought that up. So I was watching a video just before I came for this interview, um, and it was of uh, Kobe Bryant. I mean, we're all very familiar with his work ethic now. Rest in peace, Kobe Bean Bryant, yeah, yeah. 824. And today is, uh, today is his birthday, actually. Yeah, so um, so there's this video, and he's in the game, and he goes to get the ball, and he uh, had a break a finger or dislocate a finger. Right. And so he's not able to retrieve the ball, and he walk off the court, um, and he goes to the coach, and the coach put the finger back in place, and he walk it off. Like it was nothing. Like he just came over to say, hey, what's up? Like mm -hmm. that in itself, when we talk about de delay gratification versus instant gratifications, you know, mm -hmm. delay gratification will prepare you for something like that because Absolutely. you're used to going through that long winter night, those cold right. nights, middle of right. February type of deal. Right. And right. You, ain't got no, you ain't got a sweater on. You know what I mean? So, yeah, I'm, um, I'm definitely with that. I think that's a very valid point.
Yeah, and I, it, it, the fact that we're actually talking about this is, is so important because, like you said, Kobe, you know, being able to understand that concept. Also, well, humans understand that everything we go through only builds character, only builds character. And every single time you overcome uh, an obstacle or overcome a turmoil in your life, it only makes you stronger for the next time you come across it. And, you know, and that's consistent through every single facet of life. So definitely a very, very big point. Man, that's, uh, that's pretty wild. So yeah. you mentioned that you have... Um, uh, two other siblings. I did. Yes, that is you, correct. Is it like two boys and a girl, or like? Oh, one boy and one, boy and one, one, boy girl. And one yeah. girl. How yeah, old is your sister? So brother. My sister, I think she's twenty six. Twenty six. Right oh, she's a grown woman yeah. already. <laughs> yeah, she's a. Oh yeah, she's a okay. grown grown woman. I like oh, yeah. guys like afraid to like. I mean, I know. You, do they often come here to visit you, or like, how does that kind of thing work? Well, well, she was here actually. You know, luckily she's married oh, right she's now, <laughs> so she's got a. She's, <laughs> off, she's, she's off the market right now. <laughs> oh, well, you know, we had to go through a serious screening oh, process. Really? I, I told him, hey, you know what? You're taking a flower home. You know what? The next time I see this, I want to see a garden. Right, right, you know? right. So, so he, he knew what's up, you know. But growing up, you know, we had our fair, we had our fair amount of, you know, what, you know, rumbles, you know, between her and some right, of the guys, right, yeah. for sure. Well, that's like, a, that's like a typical thing, right? Like. Uh, oh, most definitely, most definitely, you know, you know, you always have guys, you know, always trying to touch your sister, you know, some of them, you know, obviously, like, you know, we do, it can be aggressive yeah, sometimes, yeah. you know, and sometimes, you know, you might just have to end up with a smack, <laughs> and that's okay by me, so, you know, you touch family, you get whatever you get, so. It is what so. it is. Yeah, um, exactly. Actually, one of the uh, things that sparked this interview is uh, you share a picture recently. It was a picture of you... I'm not sure where you were. I would guess that it was in Nigeria, maybe somewhere in the Middle East or something right. like that. You were the shirt, but right. it's very old school. It looks like something out of the 90s. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> the, 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 those were the yeah, vibes. Yeah, yeah. You know, those were the vibes. The fubus, yeah. the rock awares, the exactly. fat farm with the timbers. Exactly. Yep, yep. And I was looking at that, and it just kind of reminded me of uh, one of my brothers, actually. We were pretty close. Um, Anthony is his name. And I was saying right. that because we have a picture together that we, we used to go and uh, hustle at this nightclub, you know, back right, home. Right, right, and we, right. And we were right, able right. to get a, get a shot on one night, one occasion, while right. we were in that. And I always just loved that. So when I seen that, I was like, ah, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> This, this is reminiscent of some also awesome, awesome, awesome yeah, old yeah, school yeah, memories, yeah. you know? So, so, some so nostalgia. It, kinda, it kinda brought that back. And I was like, okay, cool. You know what? I think I'd like to find out more about this photo, when it was taken, where it was that, and all that stuff. Yeah. Oh, if I had to place that photo, I will have to say that was probably 2004. Okay. 2004, 2005. Okay, okay. And that was definitely an old man. Actually, you know what? No, that was probably in Dubai, actually okay. in Jumeirah. I remember, like, I grew up in a relatively um, strict environment, um, like as far as a, a family upbringing. I remember back in the days whenever we needed any sneakers, you know, my dad would always make us write a freaking essay about why we wanted that sneaker and what makes us think, you know, we were, we were actually, we've actually earned it. So that picture was actually taken on the second day on those mm, shoes. Okay. So I remember exactly, yeah, that was in Dubai. <laughs> I remember we went to the spot in Bord Dubai. <laughs> My dad had given me about 50 reals and I purchased those Timbos for like five point or five or seven dirhams. I don't remember. But yeah, that was a part of memory. That's not bad, day. man. That's not so bad. Yeah. All you got to do right write essays, dog. Especially <laughs> considering how hot it was. I was just surprised I was able to pull up that yeah, picture. Yeah. You know what? That was when 50 was really, really you know, dropping with this whole vibe of, you know, get you to die trying. So if you see, if, if you notice, I had the whole, that had the whole 50. It was, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it was, it was, it was way vibe on. It was way. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. You already know what's up. Yeah, no, I, uh, I like, I like the images, man. I like these old images, whatever, because I think it's important. It, it, it tells the story of where, where we come from. You know, a lot Most of the definitely. time, you know, like Bamadi said in one of his lyrics, it's like, you know, uh, if you don't know where you come from, then you don't know where you're going. You know uh, what I mean? Definitely. So I think it's always most important definitely. to like, no matter how high in the ladder we climb and we continue to climb and the success we continue to gain, we have to at some point take a pause and be most and be thankful for for where we come from, where we are, and for the future. You know what I mean? Oh, That's kind of like what the image uh, said of me. So what's new with you and uh, and and fitness? Oh, everything, you know. Where do you want to know? No, I, I, that's that's the generic. Um, right now I'm on a path, you know. I'm on a path to take over the the, the, the fitness industry uh, at a very different capacity that we've seen. You know, um, 
one thing that we or I don't know how versed you are, but I think a lot of people are aware of this. You know, there's a lot of personal trainers. I know there's there, there's a market for that, but no one really does cater to that human psyche as to why do we do what we do. And I think it's very important because with me as an individual, I always like to understand the rationale as to why I'm doing what I'm doing. And I think that's the that's really the message I want to pass across the fitness industry. You know, creating small habits that help us on a day to day and understanding why we're actually stacking these habits throughout our day to day life to see a better version of us down the line. I like that. I like that. Well we can suddenly continue this uh, conversation pretty much all day. Because, you know, there's so For much sure. uh, life experiences that come out of these things. But, uh, yeah, our time is up. Any final words? Love y'all. Y'all subscribe to D-A underscore underscore T-I-T-A-N. D-A underscore underscore T-I-T-A-N on Instagram. I have a wealth of knowledge I'm looking to share with y'all. I have a lot of tips. I have a lot of lessons that obviously could uh, support you through your journey in life. And then, yeah, just stay tuned for all of the new stuff we got, um, you know, on, on the platform. All right, man. Well, it's a pleasure having you. And, guys, if you're new to the channel, you know what to do. Um, simply subscribe to 18 Avenue Podcast. You can find us. We are available on every single platform where you listen to your podcast, Apple Podcasts, Anchor, Google Podcasts, and uh, everywhere else. And also um, the website is as well, 18avenue.com. Thank you all for rocking with us today, and we will see you all in the next episode. All right. Stay tuned, folks. Easy. All right, so that's one more activity to do. This is big number one. It is fucking hot. We got a sweater. Did you know we got I just I just finished boxing? Yes, absolutely. Go for it. <laughs>